Josh Rod here from Learn to Paint Academy. Welcome to this week's episode of the Art Studio Chat. Now this week I want to talk to you about how to paint things so they look realistic. And one of the big challenges when we're painting is that we have to understand we're painting on a two-dimensional surface. And most of the things we want to paint are three-dimensional. So if you're looking at a landscape, it has depth as well as width and height, right? And um, our canvas usually only has width and height. And um, our job is to introduce that third element of depth. How do we do that? How do we make things look 3D on a flat surface, right? As a sense of depth. And that's how you get a sense of realism in your paintings. So we'll just do a quick little demo here. I've got some burn umber and I've got some titanium white and a medium flat brush. This is acrylic. And the answer to the question is, how do we get it to look realistic, um, three-dimensional or two-dimensional surface? The answer, of course, is values. Values is... Uh, such a critical concept to understand. So if I draw a little cube here, right? Um, first of all, through just getting the right proportions and so on of the drawing, I automatically get a sense that it's three dimensional. Um, but then if I cast, if I put a source of light onto that cube, right? And it starts to cast a shadow, then we get a greater sense of it being three dimensional. So values are darkness to lightness. Where the light's hitting, we're going to have a highlight to a mid-tone. And where, where the object is in shadow, right, um, it's going to be a darker tone, a darker value. So if the light's coming from over here with this little cube, now I know a lot of you have seen me do cube exercises before. I do them often, and I remind our students at Learn to Paint Academy as much as I can that, you know, these little exercises are so important, right? So this is a form shadow. It's... The light's coming from over there. This side of the cube is blocked, right? So it's not going to pick up any of the light. Um, it also is then going to cast a shadow out the back here. So if we pop that cast shadow in as well, then we get a sense of that object, that th object now becoming three-dimensional, okay? So the light is hitting on that front face, which is we're not seeing. These two surfaces here are going to be a similar value if the light's coming down from there. This one's probably going to be slightly lighter, right? So if I take some of our burn umber there and pop a little pile, get a little bit of this titanium white, okay? So what we're doing now, we're lightening the value, okay? And on this surface here, okay, we're going to have a lighter surface because it's getting some of the light that's coming down from that light source, okay? Uh, a lamp on a table, for instance, okay? Let's blur that edge a little bit. Don't need to, I could make that a harder edge if I wanted to. But, uh, in fact, let's just tighten it up a little, okay? Now, this is just a quick little sketch. I recommend you have a go at this sketch yourself if you haven't already done so. Doing studies like this on a regular basis, I think are pretty important. And then this one at the top here, we're saying if the light's coming from that direction, the top is going to be a fair bit lighter in value. We won't make it white, but we'll make it a lighter value again. So now have a look here. The way I've mixed this, I've got our darkest value, then our mid-tone value, and now our lightest value, right? And if I put that on, then this is all fairly wet, so it's gonna get a bit mucky. But there, I've now got our lightest value there. And this little object now starts to take on a sense of form. Now, is that all we can do? Well, one thing I'll point out here is that the edge here where the object's sitting on the table, we don't see that edge so much because it's the same value. So they blur into each other, okay? Whereas we're going to see these edges here a lot more defined. Now, what we can do is, if we're doing like a still life, we could then carve out the back by putting light into here around it so that it looks like that, that light was bouncing off the wall okay and then we'd lose that edge a little bit too if the values were the same i might start shifting that value as we head around there i might start getting it just a little darker in there just so we don't lose that edge completely right and then just blur that in and then we get darker again as we come around to this side here. And then in effect, what we're doing is we're painting darks against lights, okay? And that, you know, if we, if we took our time and did a good job of that, then 
we would really carve out that shape in space and the light effect on it would then help us get a sense of three dimensionality. Okay, so this dark I'm putting in here is the wall at the back there and we'll just blur that out to there, okay? So if you look at all the old great masters, this is exactly what they did. They would put darks against lights and their backgrounds would always shift in value depending on what the object they were placing it on was. Okay. So that's how we start to create a sense of three dimensionality. Um, we use values and we understand where our darkest darks are, our midtones and our highlights, and that will then give the object a sense of form in the two dimensional space that we're working on. Now, as you can see here, I've just created a ball um, with the same light source, casting a shadow, and I've done it fairly roughly, just a quick little sketch. And um, we've got our darkest dark around this side, casting a shadow. We've got our mid-tone there, and then we've got our highlight tone in here. Um, basically, what you need is three values. Now, it's better to work with a, um, a tighter value range, so five or seven values. But if you start off with three, a dark, mid-tone, and a highlight tone, then you can start to create a sense of three dimensions in the objects that you're painting. And this applies to every object in the landscape, um, mountains, trees, rocks, everything you can think of. So hope that helps. This is how we start to get a sense of realistic looking painting, a three dimensional um, form to our objects on a two dimensional surface. Now this is just one of the ways. There are other ways to create a sense of depth and aerial perspective, which we'll talk about in another episode of our studio chat. Cheers for now.